What's going on, man? Brand new day, brand new video. Quick video, another quick video. Um, until I decide to go actually like out and about vlogging and stuff like that. But I had to uh, pick up a new graphics card for my computer. Now, which I've been dreading to doing. I've been dreading to do this for a very long time just because graphics cards are way overpriced, man. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. So I end up getting the um, Asus. What's this? A 3060 just uh kind of like mid-tier of the i guess this generation but the new generation of graphics cards is about to come out but my previous generation amd card is just like giving my computer some crazy issues or whatever but i really feel like i paid way too much for this thing man this thing was 409 dollars which this card probably would be like 189 in better times man but 409 and then with the new cards coming out, I think the MSRP is already going to be set that high. So, I don't know. But, I'm bringing this up outside of me having to fix my computer because I haven't been able to do any work all day because I've been waiting to back up files and all the other stuff just because I don't trust when I take stuff out of the computer that it's going to work properly. When I plug new stuff in, just for my luck. So, backing up everything. Uh, other than that, I bring all of this up to talk about, you know, this ugly thing called inflation. Now, listen, by no means am I a financial advisor or anything of that nature, but you know, this inflation stuff is crazy. And some of it doesn't even seem like inflation. It really just seems like price gouging. And I think there's a big difference between the two, uh, from people just taking advantage of things versus this is what the, what the actual market is. And I really feel like a lot of people are going to be in for a rude awakening both businesses and um, consumers or just general everyday people. I've already seen reports they talking about like Target has way too much uh, inventory and specific things because they were ordering more based on how they thought supply chains were gonna be. So yeah, I really feel like the system is out of whack and a huge correction is gonna come along. But like I said, I'm not a financial advisor by no means. And I'm just kind of sitting still with all my money to uh, wait for whatever this correction in the market is. Now, if it corrects and things drastically drop, then yes, you benefit. Now, if things correct and they stay more where they're at, then cool, whatever. I've already been living within that system. But I'm going to say it. <laughs> Hope it corrects when things drop drastically um, just to be able to... Um, you know, get a couple things out of life that I want, and I have to pay these crazy prices for them. Like I said, man, I built this computer that I use pretty much every day two years ago, and it cost me roughly with everything I put into it. I'm gonna just say about two grand. Now that's a lot of money for a computer. Don't get me wrong, a lot of money for a computer. But at the time, I was able to get top of the line everything pretty much for that computer. I mean, do that same build today, present day. I'm probably looking at 35 to four grand. So almost double what I paid because everything has risen in price. Something crazy, especially graphics cards. Like, I think I only paid like 180, maybe 210 for that graphics card in my other computer. I just paid double that price for this. And that one is technically, is better than this one. It's just that it's giving me problems, so I had to go upgrade. But to replace the one that's in the computer currently would cost me roughly a thousand dollars right now. And listen, I'm not about to spend a thousand dollars on a graphics card um, because I know this will work for what I needed to do. But I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just paying attention to how everything is moving, and none of it makes sense. Um, way more traffic outside, and we look at people's cars. They're just dressed. Just dressed. Not with no type of purpose. Now I'm not saying that you should pull up and see people in suits and all that stuff. But I just remember a time if you went out at lunchtime, more than likely you were gonna see people in work attire. Now I just see people in cars all day. I'm just in cars all day. I don't know what people are doing. I don't know what people are working. I know we've seen like everybody quit their jobs recently. None of this makes sense. But anyway, I'm in the video saying this too. I know in culture it's popular to preach like being an entrepreneur self-employed self-made all these things but i don't think that's for everybody um there are even times when i look at myself and say am i 100 percent 
ready or prepared for that. Now, I've been doing this since I graduated college, which was almost, was that 12, 13, almost 13 years ago when I graduated college. So, um, I guess 12 years, 12 years. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Whatever. 12, 13. I'm not, I don't know why I'm hung up, on, hung up on that. But I'm just saying, there have been times when I've questioned myself in this process of being an entrepreneur. Um, or even during the periods of time where I was just self-employed and I took on contract work all the time because I wasn't employing anybody. I didn't have a business that I created. Um, but now that I have a business that I created, it's a whole separate thing, a whole separate conversation between being self-employed and an entrepreneur. But I don't feel like diving into that. There are way more self-employed people calling themselves entrepreneurs than entrepreneurs calling themselves self-employed. But that's another conversation for another day. And maybe I'll have some some people who are very, very, very informed in that world come talk on one of my videos one day. But until then, like I said, I don't think that lifestyle is for everybody. So listen, be real with yourself, be honest with yourself, and sit back and say, yo, can I really afford the hardships that may come along with being self-employed or an entrepreneur? Now, I'm not saying hardships as in not making money, but you have to remember being an entrepreneur and self-employed person that every dollar that comes in is not yours. One, you have to set money aside for taxes. Two, you have to set money aside for operating expenses. And I don't mean your rent and things that nature. Well, I mean, your rent can be part of it because if that's where you do your business, then so, then so be it. But a lot of things you're not factoring in that you gotta take care of as, a, as an entrepreneur, self-employed person. You gotta take all those things into fact, all those factors into, um, into consideration because like i said every dollar that comes in is not yours man like trust me i didn't want to spend 400 dollars on this today but it's needed because i have a project that's going to pay me more than 400 dollars. so so for me to be able to do that project efficiently um i need this card but i have money set aside within my business on both personal things and things of this nature operating expenses and just the random stuff that happened from time to time. So, y'all know the rules, man. Be safe, be smart, be kind. Because you never know if I had to get you and sorry for these rant videos in the last couple videos, but I haven't really been leaving the house because I'm trying to get this, this big project done. And once this project is done, then we'll be back outside having fun. And I think, finally, I'll have date night with, <laughs> with Kiara this week. Um, She's been working a lot, too. Um, and I'm happy for that because, you know, she her money just as much as i need to get my money so we can be in each other's pockets and not just one person in the, you know you know what i'm about to say you know what i'm trying to say but anyway not to say that it's a problem but you know what i mean i'm out of here man peace <laughs>